Today's video I am so excited about. I have been waiting to share this piece with you for a long time. It took me a while to compile all of the pieces of this puzzle because this project started in January of 2023. I didn't finish it until I think around July of 23, not because I was working on it consistently from January through July, but this piece was so daunting. It was, it has been the probably biggest project that I have ever done to date because there was so much involved, so much intricate work went into this piece. Every square inch of this piece was sanded down because I had to get down to that beautiful, natural, light wood tone. Oh, you guys, you have to watch to the end. This is honestly, I think it's the most stunning piece that I've ever created in all of my furniture flipping career. Really quick before we get started, this piece is just called the Vintage Broyhill. I don't have a name. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I usually name all of my furniture. That is somewhat because I just intuitively find a name for something, but also when I move things through the boutique, they all have a name. That's their label. That's how I know which piece of furniture is selling through the boutique. This one, I can't seem to part with her. So she's staying here and her name is just the Vintage Broyhill. So let's check her out. This is one of those pieces that people literally fight over when it shows up on Marketplace. So I must have been first in line and I'm going to say that this guy had really good Facebook Marketplace etiquette because he did um, stand by his word that I was the first to reach out and he only wanted $60 for this and people were offering to pay him hundreds of dollars for it. And somehow he stuck to, nope, I've got somebody coming and she's giving me $60. So, oh my gosh, I was so excited to see it. I just could not believe the shape of it, the poles on it. I'm just so excited to give it a quick sand and see what we can find underneath this dark stain. Think about me because I'm starting to doubt We will find a way back to each other when you're on the other side of the world I'm here So as I was sanding this, I was just being very careful not to let the sander sit in one spot for too long. This was a very thin layer of veneer. But as I kind of got through with this top layer, I was so shocked at the beauty that was underneath this dark stain. And I knew in that moment that this entire piece was going to have to be sanded down. And I knew I had a very daunting project ahead of me, but oh my gosh, absolutely stunning, stunning result of just using the 100 grit sandpaper Ryobi sander. Um, clearly I need a new dust collector bag, which I did order halfway through this project. So far, completely blown away. I cannot wait to see what is underneath the rest of the body of this piece. Another thing I wanted to point out is, as you can kind of see going over, looking at this top after I've sanded that first layer, is that you can see kind of the splotchiness of some of the stain that was left behind. And that was me being very cautious, not wanting to leave the sander on that one spot for very long. So ultimately what I'll do is just by hand, take that piece of 100 grit paper off of the sander and just go over it um, in the direction of the wood grain and just get those splotches to come off. And then also I've started on the drawer. You can see this beautiful drawer and how it's going to be coming along. I'm gonna be extremely careful as I go over this with the orbital sander. And um, I think that you can see there the Broyhill tag on that, or stamp. And then over here, these doors is what is going to be really challenging because of the shape of it. So well, let's see. Got my mask on so you can't hear me very well. Let's see what is underneath this right here. Let's do it.
I just wanted to show you this one little spot on the drawer that I started sanding and then um, I had to stop because my sander was just done for. This little bag um, is got little tiny micro holes in it and yeah, dust was going everywhere. But look at how gorgeous o'clock and I am going my goal oh, mother of God okay so my goal was five seconds ago to finish um, sanding down like the entire front of this I'm struggling with the um, the thought of making that happen but let's see let's see how long it takes me it's two o'clock guys Finding Albert in my videos is kind of like a game of Where's Waldo? <sighs> See if you can spot him in each video from now on. Heading back to what used to be home Passing by those little towns I know so well Stopping for gas and then I'm behind the wheel So one thing I wanted to check on before I made the decision is um, there is a little trim piece on the doors that some of it was broken off. So if you look at this side, you can see that little piece of trim and it's all intact. I don't know if you can see that very well, sorry. And then on this side, you'll be able to see where I've sanded. Look at the door. Oh, you guys, this is gonna be so beautiful. Okay, here's what I'm talking about. This is where the trim is kind of broken off. So it was just empty. There's a couple of little teeny like tacks that were holding it that I'll have to remove, but it actually has a pretty distinct, nice line, um, very similar to what it looks like on the drawers and even on the top. So I'm going to just remove that little trim piece. This is not gonna be as easy as I thought. I thought it was just gonna pop right off. Well, like up here, oh my gosh, like that, yeah, that might just pop right off. Okay, <gasps> okay, got a big piece. So some of it might come out easy and some of it not so much. Like they're not, those are not coming out. They're like breaking off. As long as they're smooth and flat and you can't see them, I don't really care. Okay, so I think in that one area where it was really easy to come off, it's because I was kind of like hitting it with the sander um, when I was just testing to see what the door was going to look like. So I guess I'm just going to go back to sanding and I'll kind of sand over it and... Maybe that'll just make it easier to pop it off. Driving this like a spiritual cleanse where every mile is a new beginning and every brand holds a new end. Eyes on the road, don't lose control. I'm speeding fast to chase my soul. I'm driving to get away. Running through emotions high and low. Holding on a letting go For the sky 
All right, so this is what I've gotten done in the last two hours. I started at two and I don't even know what it looked like before. I, this whole door needed to be done. The drawers, so um, pretty good progress, I suppose. This one I didn't even start on. But all I have left to do is this, and as you can see, that bottom drawer and just the base around. And then it'll be a lot of going over it because you can kind of see where it looks splotchy. That's just because it is veneer and I don't want to go, um, you know, put the sander on it for too long. So then I'll have to go over it by hand and make sure it just looks really smooth and then... There's a couple of spots of chipped veneer, which I will have to fill in and repair before I finish it off. So, like this one right here too. I actually kept that little piece, so you will never be able to tell when I'm done. It's gonna be really, really gorgeous. As I start to move into more of the finishing work on this project, I didn't have my camera out a lot. I wasn't filming. I was more in my therapeutic space where I was just putting the finishing touches on. So I'll just explain as we go through exactly what I did to finish this piece. One thing I noticed when I got done with all of the sanding is that the trim pieces around the drawers and alongside of the curved doors that's where if any veneer was too thin and it looked like it burned through, that was the spot where I felt like it needed to have a coat of paint. So I did use full strength. I used fusion mineral paint in cathedral taupe in a full strength just on those trim pieces. And then I did a paint wash in a 90-10 ratio on the actual wood panels. So you could see the wood grain still intact in its beautiful state but it was so light, it was such a light paint wash that it really just looks like the beautiful natural wood. I'm honestly pretty surprised that there's not more damage like this that you see me zooming in on. This is where the original trim was pulled from the piece, and in this one spot, it just pulled up some of the veneer and left this kind of gouge in the door. So with that, I knew I was going to need to cover that up and decided to create an entirely new look to the piece using these 12 millimeter half ball beads to create a new trim piece around these curved doors. So I glued each and every individual little ball one by one <laughs> to this piece of furniture. It took me a while. Here you can see my weather has changed. I am in sunny clothes and I am getting to work gluing every single one of these little balls to this piece, but it really gave it such an amazing look. Now, I tend to be pretty good at freehanding. My hand-eye coordination for something like this is pretty good. Um, I did get out a small level to just go along as I was placing the beads to make sure that they were in alignment and overall, um, it's not perfect, but it did turn out pretty beautiful. 
Now here you can see that I have painted all of the beads after I got them on the piece. I wish I would have had my sprayer so I could have spray painted the beads before I attached them to the piece, um, but I ended up just attaching them and then hand painting every single little bead. So probably wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend spraying them first, um, but overall it was fine and it turned out so, so beautiful. I am literally obsessed with this piece. And then just to pull her all together, I put back on all of her original vintage hardware, including the little keyholes in the center of the drawers. I left the knobs and poles with their original patina that they had on them, and I just love how it completed the look of this piece. down my very favorite piece of furniture that I have ever done. Again, the intricacies, the amount of work, the amount of sanding. I will say as somebody who over the years has done furniture flipping as a hobby, you never even think to look at a professional sander. So in my opinion, the one that I had worked beautifully. It did the job beautifully. But at this point, looking back at the project, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments if you think I should upgrade my sander to a professional. I have one in mind. And so if I do end up getting that, I will definitely do like an unboxing and show you guys what I end up with. But again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm so happy for all of those of you that have been watching my videos and supporting me. Thank you so much. It means the world. And I will see you guys very soon.